Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about my newfound favorite activity, running. So I've only ever done any sort of running back in elementary school for cross country and track and field. Other than that, I've only probably ever ran for the bus. But when lockdown hit, gyms were closed, at home workouts were just not for me, even though there's just tons out there. It's just not for me. I'm just the type of person who just loves to lift heavy weights, and that is obviously something that I don't have at home, sadly. So I took up running, and honestly, it was the best decision that I have ever made. And from running, I was able to give myself the best results ever and when i say ever i'm the type of person who goes to the gym religiously and i have not seen this type of result that running was able to give me for those of you who aren't fond of running the way that i was i'm going to be giving you guys some beginner tips that that will help you start running by no means am i an expert at running because I'm not, but I was able to just uh, gather some tips to help you guys get started and to love running. There really is no other way around this, but if running is something that you do want to take up, it really is just mind over matter. There really just isn't any excuse for you not to run. Maybe a blizzard, maybe a hurricane, maybe a downpour, but other than that, there really is no other excuse for, not, for you not to start running. It really just takes prioritizing what you really want for yourself in order to do it. Although I know running does seem very dreadful, I love to do my runs in the morning, but it's never really easy for me, let's just say, because I love my sleep. But as soon as I'm out of bed and I'm out the door and I start running, it's the best feeling ever. One thing that I really struggled with when I first started running was stretching and warming up before my run. I was just such an eager beaver and I just wanted to get my running done and that was when my body nearly gave up on me and I was just butt hurt for months. So what you want to do as a beginner runner and for any runners who are out there is obviously stretch and warm up before your run. Now what you want to do with your stretches is you want to be able to mimic the motion of running when you're doing your stretches. So you don't need to do all those stretches sitting down and stretching out your calves and all that. Like yes, that is obviously great for running but you also want to get your body ready for the motion of actually running you can save all that other stretches i believe for later on once you are done your runs but just being able to mimic the motion of running is what you want to do and as for my warm-ups i like to do a 0.5 to a kilometer walk before my run to get my blood flowing in my body and for beginner runners, you really do want to do at least two to four runs a week. And I know it seems like a lot, but I believe that you should at least do two for your body to get used to running. Obviously, don't stress yourself and do four runs if your body is completely sore. Please listen to your body, but at least do two runs a week. What I found helpful when I first started running and what I'm doing right now is running for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Now you don't need to run for 20 minutes straight or 30 minutes straight. Give yourself a break if you really need to, but keep it short because you want to be able to build that stamina to be able to run for 20 minutes straight without stopping. And what I mean by taking a break is just doing a fast paced walk and not completely stopping so in connection to running for 20 to 30 minutes you need to find a steady pace that works for you so this might take a few runs for you to figure out but a good way to figure out that you have found your steady pace is your breathing your breathing needs to be under control and basically not be hyperventilating for dear life. There are a lot of apps out there that you could use to track your runs. Right now I am using the Nike Run Club and I find that it works well for me because it connects to my Apple Watch. And so each run that I am doing, it basically 
tracks my location it tracks my pace it tracks my calories how long i'm running for all that good stuff but you guys don't obviously have to use a nike run club just use whatever is out there and try to figure out what you like best now let's talk about controlling your breathing i think that controlling your breathing is very very important if not the most important thing about running in my opinion because if you do not have your breathing under control then you are just going to make your runs extremely hard for yourself when you're breathing through your nose the nose actually filterizes the oxygen going into your body and also warming up the oxygen as well but when you're breathing through your nose you're not actually getting the maximum oxygen that your body needs when you are ramping up the speed of your run but when you're breathing through your mouth you are getting the maximum oxygen that your body needs but the one thing with doing that is that i find that my throat gets a little bit dry to get the most out of your breathing is to engage your stomach so what that means is when you are inhaling whether it be through your mouth or through your nose expand your stomach and then contract your diaphragm as you are exhaling you also want to get your breathing at some sort of rhythm so a lot of people use the two and two rhythm which is two strides inhale two strides exhale and when you are going at a steady pace you can also go at a three and three rhythm so three strides inhale three strides exhale you kind of have to figure out what works best for you and it really does take a lot of trial and error and practice to be able to get the rhythm correct you won't get it correct right away but eventually as you run more you will get into the rhythm of breathing properly and lastly listen to your body give yourself a break when you need to some people might need a one day break some people might need a two day break some weeks i need a one day break and the next week i need a two day break everybody is different but at the end of all of this you really just need to listen to your body and give yourself a break when you need to one thing that i don't want you doing is just lying down on your bed all day or being a couch potato all day you need to still be able to move your body so go for a walk go do some yoga go do some steady cycling keep your body moving still don't be a couch potato all day give yourself an active break a question that i get asked pretty often is what do you wear for your runs so where i live right now in toronto the weather is just so bipolar it's not consistent it is maybe cold in the morning hot in the afternoon warm in the morning very cold in the afternoon raining not raining snowing it's just everything spring is just a hot mess so here are some outfits that i wear for my runs i'm going to start with the obvious you need a good running shoes but what you want to do with your running shoes is take the original insoles out and replace them with orthotics or insoles that, that cater to your needs the original insoles are pretty generic for everyone and replacing them will help with your running stance and help prevent soreness and injuries. I have to wear a pair of long socks because my ankles have now become the darkest part of my body from wearing ankle socks last year. High-waisted leggings are a must for me. I like wearing leggings that have pockets so I can put my phone in versus having a fanny pack and having it bounce around. Love me a New Balance sports bra, they are the best. Because I like to do my runs in the morning, it's pretty chilly outside so I like to wear a hoodie. Or on a windy or rainy day, I like to wear a long sleeve and a windbreaker. I'm not much of a sweaty person, so on a warm or hot spring summer day, I'm legit in a long sleeve to activate some sweating. And most importantly, I gotta wear a hat to protect my sensitive skin from the sun. So there you guys have it. I hope you were able to take away some good information from this video. And if you did, give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you are a beginner runner. And if you haven't already subscribed, go do that right now and we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!